Hi, my name is Sean Keenan, owner of Comics to Movies. You can find us at www.comicstomovies.com and you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by... Well, there's a huge time difference where he's at currently. He is a, a comic book and graphic novel publishing company. Uh, well, he isn't, but his company is. All the way from Australia, the ever-talented Sean Keenan, owner of Comics to Movies, the comic book publishing company I just mentioned. How are you doing today? Good, mate. Good. Very good. It's uh, this nice uh, perky hour of 5 a.m. So, uh, yeah, super happy to be here. Well, it's good having you on the show. I've had a lot more publishing companies actually come on the show more recently than I have in the past almost 15 years of doing this, which I find fascinating because publishing companies are really the lifeblood of supplying new comics to to the masses. So for those that don't know anything about yourself as as a business owner and as a, as a creative person that you are, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Yeah, definitely. So um, Comics to Movies has been around um, since 2007. Uh, started off as more of a um, framing uh, collectible type of business. And uh, we've gone through a couple of um, iterations since then. So we've done limited edition prints. And then in 2015, we, we'd gone more into the um, graphic novel and, and publishing um, side of things. So we've published the number one selling uh, independent comic book series here in, here in Australia called the Extreme Champion Tournament. And since then, we've gone on and published uh, titles such as Terra Olympus, uh, Talos of Sparta, uh, The 13th Labor. Um, we've got a series with actor Dan Furigal called Fractured Shards. And later this year, we're going to be launching our first ever uh, movie tie time graphic novel called uh, Occupation Rainfall. For me personally, I, I've always been a comic book fan. That's where I come first and foremost from is from a fan's point of view, which has given me a really good insight into, I believe, what people will like, um, what stories sell well, all those type of things. So I'm um, looking forward to, to kind of releasing things on a little bit more of a regular basis. You know, any independent creator out there would know that uh, the hardest part is that uh, that cash flow and trying to, to get things um, out on a regular basis. So we've kind of slowly getting that down pat now. As a publishing company itself, and, and the fact that you have so many amazing, uh, a variety of genres as well under your stable currently, and I'm sure you're going to have many more in the future. What was the first one that kind of, caught your eye that you wanted to become a publishing company from a fan's point of view i grew up in the 90s so uh x-men jim lee's x-men in 1991 you know i think my age I'm, I'm 40 is kind of the thing that got me on my comic book journey i struggled to read as a kid so um graphic novels and comics was a really good uh way to to help me kind of read and it wasn't until later in life that i found that you know i was more of a visual learner so if you can show me something I can do that more than reading something. So that's kind of what got me into comics, but it was really probably the walking dead from an independent side that, that went, Oh, I think I could, could kind of do something uh, like this. I think I was very naive <laughs> when I first went into comics. I was like, Oh, you know, this is, this is going to be, um, be easy. You know, I'll sell 5,000 of my first comic. I've done well, but I think I've got about 1,500 still left of that 5,000 print run because I was, uh, as I said, very naive thinking that I, I could just come in and, and sell that amount of uh, amount of books. But it's been really good to, to kind of, uh, the Australian comic scene is really supportive. There's been great people around that's really helped me along my journey. I think it all came down to just kind of give it, giving it a go, just really going out there and, and going, okay, uh, this is something I'm passionate about, something that I think other people will like 
and then just finding ways of, of getting that in front of people. I always wondered about this because I, I've had a lot of interviews with other creative people in, in different markets like Philippines and, and Taiwan and India and everything along that line as well too. So how is the scene in terms of uh, consumption of media, not only graphic novels, but, but t- TV and film and everything like that? I'm always fascinated about the entertainment industry in another country. Yeah, so we're very Americanized, I, I believe, in, even though we're classified as an Asian country. Um, we're very Americanized. So, you know, a lot of our film, TV, uh, everything that we consume is a lot of American um, shows. But in saying that, uh, the government is very supportive of um, Australian created content. So uh, both from the film industry and from the book industry, they're very supportive of upcoming creators, projects, and especially anything that's kind of highlighting Australia itself. In saying that, comics kind of doesn't really, and graphic novels kind of hasn't really fit in there. And I feel that it's only been the success of Marvel and the success of these other comic book projects that now comics and graphic novels are taken a little bit more seriously. But, you know, what I try and tell people is that comics and graphic novels don't have to be superhero movies or superhero shows if you look at things something like pathfinder which is you know a viking uh, movie i really enjoyed that that's based on on a comic book the road to perdition by mm-hmm. uh, with tom hanks that's yeah. based on on a graphic novel so there's so much more out there extraction with chris hemsworth an action action flick it doesn't necessarily have to be superheroes and it's breaking down that bias of a comic or, or graphic novel has to be a superhero comic that's really stuck starting to kind of let creatives just create in that graphic novel space um, type thing. So there's a different kind of grants that you can kind of get, which is fantastic. I guess the only part that's very hard in Australia is our population size. So we've only got about 22 million in our whole country, which is, you know, the size of uh, North America. So to to think that (laughs) you guys have that in a couple of cities or in New York alone, it's a very different um, marketplace. So it's kind of, we're spread out all over the over the place. So it, it's a little bit harder to kind of hit a really big market. Um, so we usually do things in our main cities and, and that's about it. Actually, I'm Canadian. So I completely understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting because I guess everything gets kind of related to, to the North American market. So I guess that's the biggest or, or one of the biggest markets in the comic and graphic novel space. So it is interesting when you start selling stuff into to other countries. So with our Fractured Shards book, that's been really popular in Canada. Um, but I've also found that I've got a really strong audience in, in France as well. So, you know, we're looking at maybe um, converting it to um, uh, into French uh, as well to kind of tap into those those maybe smaller niche markets in, in both both countries as well. Digital comics and and have how have always been a thing, or or web comics have always been a thing. But now with the emergence of of digital apps like Tapas and Webtoons and everything along that line, is comics to movies looking into that avenue of generation of revenue or production of comics? Yeah, definitely. So there's a, a company that we've been dealing with for quite some time. Uh, sometime this year they should actually go live and they're called crypto comics so i think the the biggest thing with digital comics is that being a fan and a collector is where is that worth in regards to a a digital comic so these guys have come up with a great idea in regards to their platform is uh, able to limit the amount of digital comics on on their platform. It's using blockchain, so um, NFTs to give you a certain code to a comic. So like any other comic where you look on the barcode, you know, it's the first print run and, and all that type of stuff and how much was in that print run. Very similar, but in the digital space. So we're looking at kind of more going down that avenue and, and keeping it more of a collectible 
thing. And the way we might do that is actually have something that's on that platform that's not on any other digital platform. You know, whether that's an incentive cover, whether that's um, extra content, uh, something like that. I think I've always been a firm believer of never limiting my options. And there's so many digital platforms out there now that I feel it's always better to have my product on as many platforms um, as possible to, to kind of get that out there and then um, from there you can make decisions like when you know you get maybe a little bit bigger you might pick a pick a platform but at the moment we're, we're kind of happy to kind of go with with what's out there at the moment once we've got a little bit more of our series we don't mind giving away like the first one for free so you know actually entice people new readers to jump in on the series and and everything like that so you know your web tunes and those free free platforms to, to kind of release stuff is also really good for that. Seeing as your past 15 years currently as, as a company itself here, what have you learned from when you first started to where you currently are now from a business perspective? Oh, wow. Uh, that's, there's a, there's a lot. Yeah. I think understanding my costs. So the, I think the biggest pitfall of a lot of creators is not understanding the actual finances uh, around comic creating. It, it is quite a expensive process compared to just like say writing a book where, you know, it's yourself, an editor, and maybe a cover designer, you know, your comics, you've got, especially if you can't do it yourself, you've got your writer, you've got your um, penciler, you've got your inker, you've got your colorist, you've got your editor, you've got your letterer, you've got your graphic designer, and then, and then you've got your printing and publishing costs on top of that. So for me, biggest thing that I always tell people is to understand your costs. So break each of those things down. We use crowdfunding platforms to, to fund most of our books. So that I believe has really helped and and probably why you know you touched on before why you've seen so many new um, publishing companies and creators and everything come out you know crowdfunding platforms is a great way to generate business and generate that cash flow to kind of keep your series going and everything like that the second thing i, I probably found is xct my, my main series it was like this big story that, that I wanted to, to kind of tell, you know, it was over about 50 issues and, and everything like that. I, th I think going back, it would have been better to maybe start <laughs> with something that was like a four issue mini series and then kind of grow from that. As I said, I was very naive when I started. So that's what I always uh, recommend as well. Like get, get your stuff out there and show people that you can finish some things. You know, a mini series is great for that to, to show people that, you know, if you back me, support me and get my, my stuff, you're actually going to get a full story because unfortunately the independent scene is uh, notorious for number ones, a little less for number twos and then even less at, at number threes. So. so then as a creative person that you are, what's the hardest part about being creative, not only in business, but in, in comics, the beginning, the middle or the end of your process? The end is, I feel like, the easiest part because I've got about oh, about 20 or 30 books that were released or comics and graphic novels now, and I always love uh, the opening the box, you know, that 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 first time you get to see it, uh, the smell of the pages and, and that. So that's always the easy, easy part. I think the, the hardest part for me is really working out whether one of the, the my projects is going to be successful. I think there's always that fear that when I go to Kickstarter, is this the one that's, that's not going to fund? Is this the one that's going to fall over? Is this the one that's that's kind of not going to, to generate um, any sort of audience or, or fans? So um, I think that's the, the hard, hardest part. You know, I've been quite, I shouldn't say lucky, but, but quite good in, in being able to produce things that um, have a wide audience and it seems to be quite quite popular with people. But I think that's the, the one thing that I fear the most or is the hardest part is making sure I know what my niche is or I know what my target market is and then being able to get it in front of those people. In your opinion, what's the most important quality of uh, a writer or a creative person in comics today? And how does that translate to what you've created? Uh, so yeah, for me personally, it's uh, resilience. Uh, so resilience is the one thing that I think, you know, 
for me personally and for for all creators out there you gotta you know kind of um you know be re really resilient you're not going to get all yeses uh you need to understand that um you know there's going to be a lot of no's a lot of not back knockbacks a lot of feedback that you know you're not probably wanting or or, or like liking to hear but you know um i think that's really important in you know myself you know i've kind of struggled at times with either certain projects or feedback that i've gotten and not kind of wanted to you know here but it's about just taking i guess some time taking that feedback on board and then seeing what you can use that for to to, to move forward but you know resilience 100 percent is is the one thing i think every creator um and and even business owner uh, really needs as a business owner what's the most misunderstood aspect about being a business owner that maybe the general public don't understand and they take for granted when they say you're a business owner and a comic book publisher <laughs> that hours you put in uh and i think that goes with comics as well uh you know with anything that is created like if you go down to a a local market and you see a wood toy and, and it's like 20 dollars, and someone's like oh you know that's really basic for 20 dollars." you don't see the time effort skill that goes into creating something like that and again i think that's a bias that you know we're really trying to break in the creative industry is that uh worth uh, of when we create something and you know you look at a comic and you know in in the us you, you're gonna pay 3.99 in australia about seven dollars for for a, a comic and they're like oh that's a lot of money for a comic book and they don't understand the amount of hours not just in in that comic it's all the hours you put in beforehand um to to get the skill up to get to that level and that's the same with with a business it's all those hours that you don't see you know the the getting up at 5 a.m and doing an, an interview it, uh, lodging all the tax receipts which is you know an exciting job by itself uh, um to do all your expenses it's all those come along with with owning a business but you know i was talking to someone the other day and, and said that you know i feel like creators also need to understand like whether they own a business or, or work in a business that then themselves are a business because they're producing work and producing you know whatever they are whether it's an artist a writer or, or a colorist so you know they need to treat what they do as as a business as well so that's understanding again all that finance side and, and what they're worth and and that type of thing so i i think it also comes down to the fact that artists arbitrarily undervalue themselves continuously creators in general undervalue themselves and and i think it's the stigma of the world that we're living in when it comes to the mass consumption of media that we we are consuming on a daily hourly minute basis everything's at your fingertips and so the the value the cost value and i think this ties in with what you were saying of what they perceive as expensive is in reality fair market value for what's been created i love binging uh shows and everything but there has been a real big shift uh in regards to to people's perception on on things and i think that's why also you've seen like uh, graph novels the amount of so sold graph novels absolutely skyrocket mm -hmm. compared to individual comics because that perceived value is you know i'm getting a whole story i'm getting a whole story arc or i'm and i'm able to read it in one go rather than that old school you know one week at a time or one month at a time you know that old tv show montage of of getting an episode each week and getting excited about seeing an episode each week and same with the comics getting your comic each month that's kind of been lost a, a, a little bit slowly coming back now with so many streaming platforms and everything they're needing to to draw out you know what they're giving their audience it's really interesting to see how that perception of value has also shifted with that as a business obviously it's it's amazing that you're publishing comics and graphic novels as you are with comics to movies but in regards to 
usually like submissions or accepting submissions, are you doing that on a continuous basis or, or how does that work for, for your type of business? Yeah, so it's something that we hadn't uh, done before and we've literally just uh, got a brand new website and uh, as part of that, we've gone and opened up our submissions. So we're looking at just either completed or, or half completed uh, series at the moment so that we can actually I use the crowdfunding to to kind of get that done. So there's a, a lot of different rules and expectations that we're, we've put in the submission process, but it's definitely something that we're doing and, and something that I'm really passionate about. I feel helping other creators on their journey if we can kind of fast track their learning and kind of help them navigate a lot of the pitfalls that you kind of um, happen during that creative journey and, and that self-publishing journey, if we can kind of help navigate that for them and, and get them out there much quicker, I think is um, going to be both rewarding for, for myself and, and rewarding for them. So check it out on our website uh, that, that's opened up um, now and uh, yeah, we'll get back to as, as quickly as possible. But uh, the 13th label was the, the first series that we've kind of published that I've had no creative input myself uh, into, and that's been really successful. And, and it's kind of really made me feel that I can um, be passionate about someone else's projects as much as stuff that I, I've created or, or, or been a part of myself. So then as a publishing company, especially working with uh, other creative people that are, are maybe approaching you in terms of this application process, how do you set yourself apart from other publishing companies that are currently online today in australia there's actually there's two major uh, publishers here so for that part you know it's uh, a really good uh, entry point for people so if people are trying to get their stuff in front of a new audience kind of cut through a lot of the the red red tape uh, we can definitely help with that uh, we'll also provide our own kind of fan base we've done 20 kickstarters we've got you know quite a large um audience in, it, in our own right so we're able to, to offer that the other thing that you know sets us really apart i feel from from anyone else is that ip we don't take any of the ip being a independent creator myself i understand that that is the the one thing that creators really kind of don't want to want to give up in in regards to to their intellectual property and and being able to use their intellectual property for other things so we've made a really simple contract that it, it's literally just around the publishing rights you're, you're providing us the publishing rights all the ip all the the ownership of the characters and everything stay with the, the creators. And, and that was something that I really wanted to hammer home and, and make sure that with any creator that I'm dealing with, that they understand that if they bring their, their projects, their baby, their, you know, story over to us that, you know, we're not going to actually change or, or do anything. We'll always make suggestions and, and that type of thing that to, to make it better and, and to um, look a little bit cleaner or crisp or, or anything of those those type of things. But the actual essence of the story itself and, and the characters and all that will always stay with the creators. Does it matter what genre you guys are promoting or do you have a limit as to what you won't touch as a publishing company? We've gone everything from all ages uh, to our, our latest one is a very adult uh, only, uh, Fractal Charge is a very adult only type of um, book. So we're kind of happy to, to look at anything. We've always been based a little bit more in, in action uh, type, type of comics. So I'm kind of looking to break out of that. So, you know, we'd really love to see some horror submissions. Fractal Shards is a, is a dystopian cyberpunk um, series. So, you know, we're always after, you know, really good sci-fi stories. Pretty open to, to anything they're kind of the ones that at the moment if if we had a really good horror or, or sci-fi stories that would probably jump on really quick give you our, our listeners a, a, a kind of a glimpse into what we're after as i said I've, I've interviewed other publishing companies and and they're very similar in in terms of what the, what they will do what they won't do but they're pretty open to pretty much everything so it's great to see that that you're looking forward to many 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 sub submissions i'm sure 
when it comes to uh, upcoming creative talents in, in your area? For I think this is going to be that extra work that people don't see behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've, I'm a glutton for punishment sometimes or be worth it in the end. And you're doing what you're, what you're passionate about and what you love. And you're, you're giving a platform to those that are looking to promote themselves. So it works out very well. At what point are we good enough? Whoa, wow, that is uh, a really tough question because I struggle with that even now. And I feel like it's a little bit of a, a flaw within myself and sometimes even within the creative industries that are we ever, ever kind of good enough? You know, I think when I first started, if I said that I'd sold one comic, I was going to be happy. And then when, when you sell a few, then you're like, okay, well, it's, I'll be happy when I sell a thousand comics. And then you do that and it's like, okay, well, you know, I'll be happy when I sell two and a half thousand uh, comics. And, and that always shifts and always changes. So I think for me, it's um, more about stopping and uh, really acknowledging the accomplishments that I've, I've had along the way. Uh, and then, uh, moving and pushing forward. So uh, that answer uh, is is probably a little bit ambiguous, but, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, my answer would be I'm, I'm never going to be good enough because it's always there's always going to be another goal or, or, or something else that I'm going to, going to want to reach for. So Everyone usually, usually asks what's the uh, wisest piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice that you've uh, you've ever received. But what's the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your career? The, my second. Uh, so so that, that's a good one because I always go to my to my main, main one to like, oh, that's the one that everyone's going to ask me is that that first one. So I guess the second one is to, um, and it's really simple, is just to get started. You know, people always ask, oh, you know, you know, how do you, how do you create a comic or how do you write a comic or how do you um, start a business? Oh, you just need to get started. It's really simple and it's probably oversimplistic, but, but that's really what it is. It's about, you know, getting those ideas down on paper, understanding how it works, and then actually starting to, to work to what you've written down. We always say, especially in the creative writing part, is that anyone can have an idea, but it's those that actually start and finish what they've started are the ones that you're going to read and know about. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? My, my artist was um, uh, American on, on XCT uh, for the first five issues. So really good, great guy, Jerry Gaylord from um, Boom Studios is actually working on the new uh, X-Men 97 animated series for, yes. for, for Disney. Uh, super nice guy, but my main character in my series XCT is uh, Spartacus. I had written the, the script about this real big battle scene. Uh, it was very descriptive in regards to, to what I uh, wanted him wearing. I got the, the artwork back and he's Spartacus. It's like, you know, it looks really cool. He's, he's, he's really imposing. And then all of a sudden I realized that he's in a, a thong. <laughs> And I'm like, why would you draw Spartacus in a thong? It's not that type of book. And then I realized that over here, thongs are what we wear on our feet. So they're flip-flops or in New Zealand, they're called jandals. Um, so, so I learned really quick that, uh, you know, um, the power of language and, and, and power of, uh, you know, uh, making sure you don't use slang. And uh, I do do that a, a lot in my scripts. It's very important when it, when it comes to collaboration. Based on, on the scripts that you've written, what was a, a scene or a sequence where when you finished the script and you got the artwork back for it that just blew your script out of the water when you saw the art to it? Well, I'm not, I'm not an artist and I, and I love artwork. So, you know, literally every single page, <laughs> I find like the artists are, are waiting for some like, you know, really critical feedback. And I'm always that type of person like, oh my God, that's amazing. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. So I'm notorious for, for, for loving the, uh, everything that, that gets put in front of me. I, but I guess... For me personally, there's one, like we did an anthology and there was this, this one 
story that I was really passionate about. I was a big fan of, of Terminator, the, the scene where he walks into the police station and just kind of starts, you know, cutting everyone everyone down. There's this uh, small anthology story that we did about Achilles and he kind of goes into a, a police station and, um, you know, he's talking about who is the bad guy. You know, XCT is based around the UFC evolving back to gladiatorial combat, us watching them fight to the death. And it's all these different historic heroes that we've found the remains of and clones them to, to fight off in this, this tournament. So he starts off, you know, very calm and collected in regards to talking about well who is the the bad guy here you know is it us for for, for killing it or is it you guys for for standing there watching um all these people watch us kill people to to uh you know fight to the death type of thing when i saw the artwork for that that was kind of you know, I always had an image of what I wanted that to look like in my head. But then when I got that back, it was just, you know, um, 10 times better than I, I could ever have thought. And, you know, we're really lucky. We had an artist called Eddie Nunez who did those, those uh, that short story. And he's, he's now gone on to, to do uh, He-Man Masters of the Universe with Kevin Smith on Netflix. So, you know, I've been very lucky to work with some artists just before they've kind of broken into that next echelon type of thing. That's one that really sticks out. And even now, uh, we've gone back our only black and white book and we've gone back and coloured it. And even when I got those colours for the first time, again, I had that feeling where I was like, damn, it's just like so much better than I kind of thought. Well, it's always great to be excited about the creative process. You know, I wouldn't have thought that I was a, a majorly creative person. I've always liked to write, but I just think, you know, going to, to conventions, being around all these other people that are that are so creative, that that really got my juices juices flowing. So, you know, from, as I said, at the top of the show, I'm a fan first. So, you know, I really enjoy and I'm really enthusiastic to, to kind of bring that to, to other people as well. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Wow. I have to say Jim Lee. I've got the original limited edition print of, of that X-Men, the, the four different covers with, you know, um, Cyclops, uh, Gambit, um, Iceman and, and Magneto. That was the, the one thing that got me into, into comics. That was what still resonates me uh, with me now. Like even when I see... Jim Lee's uh, work, you know, he's got a very distinct style and, and everything. So he, I would say, is that that number one from an art point of view that that has really got me into into comics. Um, but then, you know, it has to be the the person or the godfather of, of comics, which is Stan Lee, and you know, going back and reading a lot of um, the very early uh, comics. I think we kind of take for granted, you know how good they were written in, you know, that era when, you know, there was no other kind of superhero in comics and, and that type of thing. So, you know, the, the original Spider-Man and, and that I've always kind of really been drawn, drawn towards. From a professional standpoint, you are a comic book publisher. You are a comic book writer as well. And you have created many successful campaigns as on Kickstarter and you're going to publish many more amazing books in the future with your comics to movie publishing company. So professionally you are successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Personally successful. Wow. We touched on this before in regards to, I think that's one of my flaws that, you know, I don't take stock enough of, of my success. Um, personally, XCT got nominated for a couple of different comic book awards. We won one in, uh, 2020 for best comic. So, and I guess that is more from a professional standpoint, but yeah, you know, I have a lovely wife. Uh, I've got a five-year-old, uh, almost six-year-old daughter. Uh, I'm about to have a, another daughter in about eight weeks. Congratulations. So, thank you very much. Uh, so we know we're having a little girl, so that's, that's super exciting. So from that point of view, I guess 
personally, it's about being a good father, being a good role model, being a, a father. It's very independent, strong-willed women uh, or little girls at the moment. You know, I really want to set an example that they can kind of do anything in this in this world. And willing to change and better myself is something that I really pride myself uh, on, both personally and professionally. So. Um, yeah, you know, I think I'm. I think I'm on the right right track. But uh, when, when my girls hit about sixteen, ask me that question again. Whether I feel that, that I'm successfully personally. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Well, I've had heaps of failures. I like to just call them learning experiences. Uh, as long as you don't repeat the same mistakes, then it's an, a, a learning experience. If you think you're going to go through life without failing, uh, I think that's a very uh, naive way to look at things. So, you know, I understand that you're going to fail. I understand I'm going to fail often, but it's about how I move forward from that, what lessons I can take, and then what knowledge I can share uh, to, to kind of help people from making the same mistakes that I've done. And I guess, you know, going back on to, to offering submissions, that's one thing that I would, I would really like to help people do in, in regards to, you know, understanding contracts, uh, navigating that type of world and, you know, understanding that you're not signing away, you know, your IP and, and those type of things where you hear so many horror stories people kind of giving away things or, or signing things that they, they don't understand. So, you know, for me, it's all about navigating those spaces and, and some of my failures have, have cost me quite a bit, a bit of money. It is just a, a learning experience and, and making sure that I've learned something out of each of those failures. The younger generation is looking at your work and then becoming inspired to be creative in their own way. And the fact that you have the younger generation and soon to be younger generation times two in your household, eventually they will become creative in some way, shape or form. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Yeah, well, I guess for me, it's just about being true to yourself and telling stories that resonate with you, you feel will also resonate with, with others. For me, we're going back to Jim Lee and, and the X-Men and about the underlying story there of treating people as, as second-class citizens based on, the, in this um, case, being mutants. I feel it's still very prevalent, unfortunately, 30 years later, and, and a lot of those themes run through through our books as well with the Extreme Champion Tournament. You know, we're, we're cloning these these people and, and tr not tr treating them less as, as humans. You know, for other creatives coming up, it's about understanding what resonates with them creating a good story or artwork or whatever uh, creative passion they, they have and then hoping that it resonates with with other people other people out there if your life was a, a movie or a comic book since you happen to have both in your business title i'll <laughs> give it either or what would its title be and what would the soundtrack be well, soundtracks are easy. Um, I would always go with Linkin Park. Their songs always seem to kind of really hit home for me. Uh, you know, every time I hear what I've done, it's like, okay, I'm going to have to go home and watch Transformers tonight. Like, you know, it's just just that instinct uh, um, type of uh, feeling that I get when I when I hear that song. So uh, the soundtrack would definitely be be Linkin Park. Uh, maybe a little bit of Limp Bizkit thrown in there. Uh, Showing my age there. I was going to uh, say, going back a bit on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the title one crazy fucking Aussie no no argument on that one <laughs> well Sean I do hate to say it but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking I want to thank you so much for coming on the show thanks for having me man really appreciate it before I let you go where can we find you how can we support you and do you have anything upcoming that you want to promote yeah, definitely. So it's really easy. Comics, the number two movies on all social media platforms. So we're on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all, all of those, as well as I've uh, got the, the website, comics to movies com and .com.au so uh, you can check us out all there uh, in regards to projects we've got three really big projects coming up so we've got uh, issue three of the 13th labor uh, hitting kick 
Kickstarter in a couple of weeks. So uh, you can check that out on Kickstarter. Uh, we've got our first ever uh, female-only creative uh, title that we're doing called Aquila, uh, and that's a spin-off series based in the cyberpunk um, series Fractured Shards. And then later this year, um, I'm super excited to, to do our first ever um, movie tie-in graphic novel called Occupation Rainfall. So uh, if you're in Canada or the US, you can check out Occupation Rainfall on Netflix. Uh, it's a very cool sci-fi um, series. There is two movies out and they are doing a trilogy um, of films, which is which is very cool. And we're going to be doing a tie-in graphic novel for that. So that'll hit Kickstarter later this year and uh, we'll expand that universe a little bit more as well. So re really excited about uh, doing that. Well, you'll just have to stop on by in the future for that, that Kickstarter. I wouldn't mind having you back on for sure. Definitely. Well, I'll, I'll, if, if you would like that, we can try and see if we can get the, the director on as, as yeah. well and get him talking about the, the project. He's a very great guy, very passionate about the independent creative scene. He, he's come through from that film side. So, you know, we're, we're doing the comic side. He's come from through that film side and he's kind of given me this opportunity, which I'm super excited about uh, right. being able to, to kind of do and and get out into the world. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two, since, you know, I don't want to get us confused in that <laughs> regard here. Uh, but of course, you can find all of this on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website because I'm only one person, which is youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.